Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. A few things to get through today. First of all, we've got a new online Hammers Chat store. Second of all, we want to take a look at the number one targets for the positions at West Ham that we're trying to recruit for the summer. Thirdly, we need to promote one football. And lastly, is a centre-back debate. The centre-back topic is the one that I want to talk about today. Mainly Kurt Zuma and Nikola Milenkovic. That's what I want to talk about, but that ties into the number one targets. But before we get into that, uh, new online store we finally created one. It's been a long time coming, um, but the link is in the description and the pinned comments. So if you wish to have a little look at the products we've got or pre-order the new polo shirt, which is on your screen right now, uh, we're taking pre-sales on this. We'll get the order in starting next week and then we'll get them posted out as soon as we get them which we're hoping will be in a couple of weeks time Must thank you to everybody who's had a little gander so far we've got lots of products in the pipeline anyway going into the summer transfer window we knew that Darren Moyes was after three positions centre back midfielder and striker and we've always believed well I've always believed and still do that Tam Abraham was his number one choice for striker for various reasons um, there were people on the West Ham side of things that were credible with information was simply telling us that is David Moyes' number one choice for striker. David Moyes himself has spoken about him. Granted, he was bit this saying he's too expensive, but that he didn't deny interest. He didn't deny that he wanted him. He just said he was a bit too pricey. And thirdly, there's almost a lack of activity for the striker. We haven't seen one. We've not really got any knowledge of confirmed bids for any strikers like that which would insinuate we're waiting for something. I think that something is because we're waiting on Chelsea. Wait and see what Chelsea do. Whether that's bringing another striker to help free up the move for Tam Abraham or to lower their price tag for him, or both. I think we've been waiting. And so I do believe Tam Abraham is the number one choice for striker. Midfielder, no brainer. It's Jesse Lingard, for obvious reasons. After that loan move last se season, why would Moyes not want him back at London Stadium? And again, Lack of activity is because we're waiting to see what Jesse does. Now, unfortunately, as every day and week goes by, it looks more and more likely he will remain at Old Trafford, certainly for the first couple of Premier League games, because obviously the summer transfer window shuts after the season gets underway. So there is a small chance he will move then. We're seeing the links to Pereira and all that, but Moyes has been patient so far. I think he still is waiting a little on Jesse Lingard. The news of Marcus Rashford undergoing surgery will not help West Ham, but he's waiting. However, the main topic today is the centre-back because during the summer, I'm never really knowing or even got a vibe as to who David Moyes' number one choice for centre-back was. I didn't know. We've been linked to plenty of them. We've been linked to some in the Penny League, like Tarkowski from Burnley. Some in England, but not in the Penny League. Uh, Joe Waddle, not in Forest. Loads of European centre-backs have been linked to as well. But I've still never really known who Moyes would want the most. Until this week... Nikola Milenkovic. I believe that is Damien Moyes' number one choice for centre-back. But before we get into that, I just want to point in the direction of the One Football app. Ahead of the new Premier League season, have you been thinking, wishing, there's an app out there that did it all, gave you everything you wanted as a football fan, that delivered you the latest team news, the latest transfer rumours and gossip for your club, the latest fixtures and results, the stats for your squad and players, it's all in the one football app. Also, it's combining the social media with football. You choose exactly what you want to see. You follow what you want, and then you see the streamlined version for that club and competition. Best of all, it's completely free. So get it downloaded today. Link is in the description and the pinned comments. Now, number three on the agenda is gone. Let's take a look at number four, which is the centre-back situation at West Ham United. And I'm starting to believe I've somewhat convinced myself, if you like, that Nikola Milenkovic is David Moyes' number one choice for the centre-back. If he could pick anyone, that's who he would pick, within reason, of course, taking in mind a budget, so on and so forth. If not, I'm pretty sure he'd pick Harry Maguire, but he can't. So, Nikola Milenkovic, it is, I have to confess. I'm getting a bit excited by it, and I know you're thinking, well, come on, then, if you're getting excited, tell us about the player. Convince us why he would be a good fit for West Ham and why David Moyes should have him as his number one target. And um, this is where I'm going to disappoint you. Probably not for the first time in my life. Probably not for the first time tonight I'm going to disappoint someone either. But I think Milenkovic is David Moyes' number one choice. And, what, and the reason I'm getting excited is because I'm guilty of getting excited through other people's excitement, if that makes sense. I've got friends whose football opinion I somewhat trust to some extent, and they're convincing me, reassuring me, 
who would be a brilliant signing for West Ham. The comments of the YouTube videos when we've covered him in the past have convinced me he'd be a brilliant signing for West Ham. And it's a long-standing rumour. And I know you're thinking, well, if it's such a long-standing rumour, why haven't you watched him? The opportunity just hasn't been there. He's Serbian, so he wasn't at the Euros, because Scotland put them out. And obviously plays in Italy, and there's been no domestic football to watch him. But he ticks all the boxes for what David Moyes would like, I think, in a centre-back. His stats back up the profile as well. Everything just says David Moyes. Everything suggests that Moyes would like him. And I'm getting a little bit excited by it. But even though we can't talk about the player because I don't know enough about him, we can talk about the transfer itself. All the alternative, Kurt Zuma. Now, this story seems to have picked up pace in the last 24 to 36 hours. Probably because he's been linked to Sevilla um, in a transfer swap deal and he's a bit reluctant to go there. He doesn't really want to move there. And that has put West Ham's name in with him and there's a few journalists respected journalists as well suggesting that we've had a bid rejected and we're going to go back with a second bid of around 20 million euros which is the same price as what Nikola Milenkovic has been touted at around 20 million euros and this is a bit of an awkward one Kurt Zoom. I say awkward it's not awkward at all but is he good enough I think he is right I think if we sign Kurt Zuma tomorrow forget the price for one second we sign Kurt Zuma tomorrow I think he goes in our starting 11 on paper here in Ogbonna centre backs really good signing but when you take into consideration the price that's where I get a little bit nervous if it was 10 million bite your hand off fantastic signing let's go a bit like the Ariola thing no brainer get him in 15 million you start thinking okay there's maybe better alternatives out there for a similar price tag but now we're up at 25 million Chelsea apparently want 25 million for him that's where I start to panic a little bit and think I'm not sure he's worth that much. I think there's probably better options out there than him because he's a good centre-back and that's it. I don't think he's outstanding. I don't think he's good enough for Chelsea. I think Chelsea are doing the right thing trying to offload him. You know, Tuchel came in, throws him out the squad. Even when they played a back three, he still opted to not play him in that back three. Mainly because Aspilicueta would play there and it makes sense. A bit like Adam Carswell for us. You need someone that can take the ball out of the defence. But... Let's ignore that. Let's ignore his exclusion at Chelsea and look at Kurt Zuma, their defender. Um, I think he's good enough for West Ham, but I don't think he's good enough for Champions League teams. I think we are the level he is at. And that's not meant to be... I know it comes across as a bit of a backhanded compliment to Kurt Zuma, but what I'm trying to say is that I think there's better centre-backs out there that we could get. Um, you know, you look at the clubs around us like Leicester City, I would suggest that Wesley Fofana is a better centre-back than what Kurt Zuma is. And, but it would be good, Kurt Zuma. But this is why I get nervous with the price tag. When it reach, goes into that 20 million, I think, oh, I'm not sure, not sure he's that good though, because he's someone that would be replaceable, if that makes sense. Perhaps Moyes would get a tune out and Moyes would make him a better defender and therefore he would become indispensable for West Ham but you look at our starting 11 on paper you know Suchek Rice they're irreplaceable it's hard to buy players better than them and um, Zuma is, doesn't really fit into that category for me I think we'd be able to go out and buy a centre-back better than him the centre-back situation itself is a bit of a weird one because I didn't think we'd want a centre-back or need a centre-back even when we're being linked to plenty I thought don't know why we'd spend a lot of the money there because um, coming into the summer also we had Balbuen on our books who never got a new contract but even then I, saw, I suppose I was probably guilty of relying on the reports that Frederick Alves was looking that good in the 23s without having watched them in my own eyes because I expected him to sort of take Balbuena's place in the first team and that would give us Diop, Alves, Dawson or Bon. I thought that's alright, that's enough we don't need to spend 20 million on a centre-back that's enough, spend the money elsewhere however having watched Alves in pre-season it is difficult I do think it's difficult for centre-backs to look good in pre-season because I don't think they get tested enough I don't think tempo's high enough whereas centre midfield for example I think that's where it's easiest to look better in pre-season because instead of two or three touches you get four or five because the tempo's lower last tackle so on and so forth so I do feel a bit bad for Frederick Alves to some extent but I've also felt that we're Baptiste and Alisi in the, the wings and the younger side um, at West Ham I always thought the centre back area was one that we've actually got potentially players for the future breaking through so I was quite relaxed until this summer now I'm starting to get on the side of yeah we could do with the centre back because Obon has got his injury problems in the last year of his contract getting on a bit 
I'm, I'm still not convinced convinced by Craig Dawson I think he had I think he was fantastic when he first came in and then to sort of the second half of his spell in the first team for West Ham if you like last season I felt he was poor I thought he was poor so bringing in a top defender makes sense is Kurt Zuma a top defender I think he can be on his day I think he can also be error pro and I think his position positioning can be questionable at times his lack of concentration whatever you want to call it quite often strikers get an opportunity by just following Kurt Zuma for 90 minutes he will let you in at some point but it's good enough for West Ham as far as I'm concerned the only thing I don't want under any circumstances is Kurt Zuma to be involved in any form of deal with Declan Rice and the same with Tammy Abraham even if Kurt Zuma was Moyes' number one centre back and Abraham was his number one striker I don't want that involved with Declan Rice because the only thing more important in our number one targets is our number one priority which is keeping Declan Rice that's what we need to do so I don't want any deals involving Declan Rice in this and I don't think we would I don't a swap deal itself is difficult a double deal is difficult trying to do two players coming one way with money and one player going the other it's near on impossible in football Chelsea are literally experiencing at the minute they're trying to give Kurt Zuma to Sevilla so they can get a Sevilla player in return and he doesn't want to go so now they've got a bit of an issue trying to sign their their number one centre back um, so we need to be a little bit careful of that I don't want to see that happening and to be fair I don't think it will my concern at the minute believe it or not my biggest concern at the minute with West Ham is the Aston Villa thing you know Man City today have bid 100 million for Jack Grealish now whether it gets accepted or not is we have to wait and see and I hope it doesn't Okay, as a football fan, not partly because I'm a West Ham, but just a football fan in general, I hope they reject it because at the start of the window, if you ask me what I would have liked to have seen in the Premier League away from West Ham, I would sort of, would include West Ham a little bit, but it would be Declan Rice remains West Ham, Calvin Phillips remains at Leeds, and Jack Grealish remains at Aston Villa. The non European Super League clubs hold on to their best players that are impressed at the Euros for England. They stay at their clubs. So this is one of the three, a way to possibly move. But what that does do, it puts 100 million into the pocket of Aston Villa. And this is where we'll see a domino effect now in football because then they're going to be expected to spend the money and so on and so forth and they'll get filtered through a little bit. But what that does do, it pushes Villa into competition with West Ham for players. Tammy Abraham in particular, we know Villa have been possibly wanting him back um, now they've got 100 million if they get 100 million it would make sense uh, Pereira is supposedly our backup to Jesse Lingard they're going to need someone to replace Jack Grealish now we all believe that's Leon Bailey as well um, whether they sign him or they need someone else on top of that remains to be seen and this is where our sort of slow if you like um, progress in the transfer window might come back to haunt us a little bit because any player that becomes available that we're looking at you'd imagine Aston Villa with a large amount of cash will also be looking at similar players some of them exactly the same so anyway there you go I'm just gonna wind it up there a bit of a random video but it's mainly to say I think Nikola Milenkovic is the number one choice for David Moyes at centre back along with Tammy Abraham and the striker and Jesse Lingard was the midfielder so if that's who they are if that's who we've identified We've made a good start with Ariola, but let's not stop there. Let's keep going because a couple of signings before the start of the season in two weeks' time will get the fans a little bit excited. We've got excited with the Ariola one. I want to continue that excitement. I want to continue the feel good factor. And the only way we can do that is by getting the players David Moyes once. There you have it. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out the One Football app in our online store if you don't mind. And I shall catch you in a bit. Ta ra!